Hi guys, what's up? So today we will start with monetary policy presented by Ayush Sanghi. So I am a chartered accountant and I have taught at various reputed UPSC civil services study centers. Now please I request you to spread the word of this education revolution that is an academy. So this was the this was the advent of why I came over here because I really liked the initi initiative by Roman and Korov in terms of an academy. Please ask any query or doubt in the comment section below on this Facebook page as is mentioned over here. That is facebook.com oblique Roman Saini official. As you know that Roman focuses on the keywords and the summary more than anything else. So we will only focus upon the keywords and summary in terms of learning. These are the things that will extremely help you in terms of the examination that is prelims 2016. As you know that India started economic planning in 1951, which was immediately after the uh, constitution had been adopted in 1950 and the first five-year plan started in 1951. The planning era in 1951 started with public finance. Financing the public or the finances with the public, that is the money supply with the hands of the public. Those are divided into two legs. First is monetary policy and the second is fiscal policy. The monetary policy is in the hands of so-called central bank of any country. In case of India, it is the Reserve Bank of India, that is the RBI. The economic policy of RBI is emphasizing only on two objectives. The first objective being economic development of the nation. Economic development of the nation means infusing more money into, into the economy so that more people get employment, they spend more and accordingly the money supply in the economy can be raised. It will eventually raise the national income and the standard of living of the people. So the first objective being economic development of the nation. Second objective is to control and reduce the inflationary pressure on the economy, which is the inflation. Inflation, as you know, is the general rise in prices of goods and services. In order to reduce the inflation, RBI takes certain measures through its policy rates, which also reduces the inflationary pressure on the economy. Twofold objective, first is economic development and second is inflationary pressure on the economy. The formal definition of monetary policy focuses on three things. First is the influence, the availability of money supply in the economy. How, what do we mean by availability of money supply in the economy is appropriately focusing upon what kind of money do people have? What access to money do people have? If people are able to access the money that is from the commercial banks, that means that it is money available for the public. Will the RBI be able to influence this money at money supply? Yes, it will be able to. Hence, influencing the availability of money, which in turn determines the size of money in the market. And what size in money in the market is determined, that will eventually determine the rate of growth, what we have studied in national income accounting in terms of, in terms of GDP growth. So availability, size and growth of the money supply in the economy is determined by the monetary policy framework of the RBI. This is a process of managing the nation's money supply within the economy. Coming to the next topic which focuses upon the types of monetary policy. Broadly speaking, there are two types of monetary policy as you can see. First is expansionary monetary policy. The word itself explains expansion of money supply in the economy which means increasing the supply of money by making the supply of credit or as we can say in crude terms, the supply of money in the economy easily available. When the money supply is easily available, it means that the bank has adopted rates or interest rates that are very, very cheap. Hence, that is also known as cheap money. Whenever the RBI has adopted expansionary monetary policy, it can be said to be that the money has become very, very cheap in terms of lending to the people. The reason why expansionary monetary policy is required is when there is a recessionary phase in the economy, which means that the people don't have a lot of money in their hand, which has eventually led them to less demand the goods and services, which is in turn not creating the sale of goods and services and in turn creating high levels of unemployment. So two reasons, first is recession and the second is unemployment that leads to 
determination of expansionary monetary policy by RBI. So this is the first thing. Second type of monetary policy is the opposite of expansionary monetary policy that is contractionary monetary policy or CMP. So exactly the opposite, it decreases the supply of money in the economy. Decreasing the supply of money in the economy because of two reasons. First is increasing inflation in the economy. When there is increasing inflation in the economy, people again demand more goods and services. If they demand more goods and services, the price for goods and services automatically rises, which is inflationary tendency. It will in turn raise the interest rates by banks, which will make the money expensive. So opposite of cheap money in contractionary monetary policy is expensive money. CMP exactly the opposite of EMP. Now there is a risk associated with each. The risk associated with expansionary monetary policy is that it has to be raised in a balanced manner. If it is excessively raised, it, it carries a risk of inflation in the economy. Risk of inflation in the economy as money supply in the economy increases a lot. On the other hand, contractionary monetary policy Particularly, it decreases the supply of money, which may also lead to deflationary tendency in the economy. Hence, one should adopt both the monetary policies in a very balanced measure that is taken by the RBI. In India, the C. Rangarajan, that is the RBI governor or the ex-RBI governor, has stated two objectives of monetary policy. The first objective being, being to regulate the monetary expansion with what we were calling money supply in the economy and the second is to ensure adequate expansion in credit to assist economic growth. Adequate expansion in credit again means money supply that will assist the economic growth in the economy. Broadly speaking, objectives of monetary policy are listed here below. Firstly, economic growth as we had discussed. Second is price stability. Price stability means keeping the prices of goods and services in check by having either excess money or reduction on money, basically adequate money. Third is exchange rate stability. Exchange rates will be always be stable if the demand and supply of the rate are fixed. That is cheap and cheap and cheap and expensive money. Fourth is it would generate employment as we are just read expansionary monetary policy is adopted if there are high levels of unemployment. And the last is equitable distribution of income. What we mean by equitable distribution of income is equal distribution of income not in terms of the total income that is within the country but it simply means the total income that is there and whoever is willing to work and is working in terms of being employed he is getting paid as per whatever he deserves. Coming to the next topic which focuses upon the tools to regulate monetary policy. Broadly speaking, there are two types of tools within the monetary policy. First is known as the quantitative tools and the second are qualitative tools. Quantitative tools focus upon the quantity of money supply in the economy. Quantity of money supply is focused upon by six basic types of rates that regulate the monetary policy. So these are the mentioned six rates. We would discuss each and every rate in the coming slides. First, speaking about the quantitative credit control measures. The first rate is the cash reserve ratio or the CRR as we may call it or you may read in the newspaper. CRR means the reserve of cash that is determined by the RBI on the commercial banks what they have to keep with the RBI at the end of every single day. So whatever total deposits are with the commercial banks, they have to keep a certain percentage of those deposits with the RBI in the liquid form at the end of every single day. It is 4% as of the 1st of September. CRR determined by the RBI and the deposits are kept with the RBI. But please remember, there is no interest paid no interest paid on these deposits that are kept with the RBI. Remember this fact about CRR, no interest. It is important for prelims. Coming to the second type of rate that is SLR, statutory liquidity ratio. These are those funds which are kept by the commercial banks with themselves in a liquid form or you can say in the form of cash as well as gold. So it can be kept in the form of cash and gold with them themselves. As of now speaking, it is 21.5% as of 1st September. 
SLR can even be raised up to 40% by the RBI in order to control the credit of money in the market. Reserve Bank of India has these very beautiful instruments with them in the name of CRR and SLR, discussing their impact. What is the impact of CRR and SLR? Raise in CRR and raise in SLR would, would, increase, would increase the rates that will be parked as the funds with the RBI in terms of SLR or with themselves by commercial banks in terms of SLR. If those funds are blocked, then those funds cannot be used to lend out to the people in terms of loans. If those funds cannot be lent out as loans, automatically it would lead to reduction in credit supply in the market. Hence, if the RBI states or increases CRR or SLR, it would reduce the money supply in the market. If it reduces the money supply in the market, it would lead to reduction in inflation. So these are the two certain types of ratios that lead to reduction of credit supply in the market. Speaking about the third rate, which is the repo rate. Repo rate is the rate at which banks borrow funds from the RBI. Banks which means commercial banks, commercial banks borrowing funds from the RBI is, the, is at the rate what is known as repo rate. The full form of repo is repurchase option. Repurchase means whenever the RBI borrow the funds to the commercial banks on an agreement that they would get them back from the commercial banks. The purpose of taking funds or loans from the RBI by commercial banks is to meet the gap or the shortfall that they are facing in terms of money or loans that they want or they want to disburse and how much they have on hand to lend. If there is a gap, they would borrow the funds at a rate that is repo rate. As of now, the repo rate is operating at 7.25% of, of the total that is to be deposited. The impact of repo or how does this help in controlling inflation is that whenever RBI wants to control inflation, it would raise this rate. If it would raise this rate, the banks would not borrow funds from the RBI. If they are not borrowing funds from the RBI, they would not lend the funds further to the people. If they are not lending the funds to people further, hence the money supply in the economy would decrease. And if the money supply in the economy decreases, it would lead to less inflation. On the contrary, the next type of rate is known as reverse repo rate, RRR, reverse repo rate. Exactly the opposite of repo rate. Reverse repo means the rate at which central bank, that is the RBI, borrows from the commercial bank. Now, you may ask a simple question that why do the commercial banks need to lend to RBI? Simply profit. Commercial bank operates on a motive of profit. So if they are charging or if they are getting more rate of interest from the central bank instead of what interest rates they are charging from the people outside, then they would be more motivated to lend to RBI. If they are more motivated to lend to RBI at the rate of interest decided by the RBI, it would again lead to reduction of money in the economy. If it leads to reduction of money in the economy, it can be said that it is leading to less inflation. At present, you can see the reverse repo rate is fixed at 6.25%. That is 100 basis points less than reverse repo rate. Easy point to remember reverse repo rate is that reverse repo is always fixed at 1% less than the repo rate. Look here, it is 6.25 and as we had seen earlier, repo rate is 7.25%. Combined repo rate and reverse repo rate are known as policy rates. Remember this, this may be asked in PT that what are the which of the following are defined as policy rates only repo and reverse repo, only repo and reverse repo rates. So we have discussed four rates so far. First is CRR, SLR, repo, reverse repo. Impact on inflation, what we can see over here is increase or decrease in terms of inflation. So it is repo and reverse repo that would create an impact. So each of them will reduce the inflation in terms of increase in each of these rates. So if they increase, they would reduce the inflation. On the other hand, if they decrease, they would increase the inflation in each of each cases. That is repo, reverse repo, CRR and SLR. Talking about the fifth rate, that is the bank rate. Bank rate again means the rate at which RBI provides loans to the commercial bank.
then what is the difference between repo rate and bank rate rbi provides only long term credit facility or long term loans to commercial banks at a rate defined as bank rate at a rate defined as bank rate so the main difference between repo and bank rate is that repo is only to bridge the shortfall of short term credit facility whereas bank rate is for long term credit facility at present bank rate is at 8.25% on this particular date the last instrument that that is in the hands of that is in the hands of monetary policy rbi is open market operations shortly known as omos a question asked in pt 2015 simple question that who controls the omo so it's rbi and rbi means monetary policy so but speaking about open market operations when the buying or selling of government securities takes place in open market it is referred to as omos buying and selling of government securities it is a little broader instrument than the bank rate as all the government securities can be purchased and sold sold in the open market through the activity of omos so rbi may control this or it may promote this on the on the basis of that it may lead to increase or decrease in the money supply and consequently inflation so broadly there are six rates firstly the as we discussed crr slr both deposits that are to be kept with the rbi as well as with the bank themselves don't earn any interest uske baad humne padha repo as well as reverse repo rate repo rate is something that the rbi charges from on lending to the banks and reverse repo is actually is exactly the opposite of repo rate fifth is the bank rate and lastly the open market operations all six tools in the hands of rbi talking about the differences between crr and slr this may be important for pt remember first it is kept with the rbi whereas this is kept with self banks themselves please remember slr can be in any form it may be in the form of cash as well as in the form of gold as well as in the form of any other form gold and cash mainly and slr is used to purchase government securities by the commercial bank the rate that ranges between of crr or the power of rbi in order to range the rate of crr is between 3% and 20% whereas slr can be fixed up to 40% it's up to 40% at present it's 21.5% at one point of time slr used to be as high as 38.5% that is the pre liberalization era so it used to be a very high rate hence very less inflation or very less money supply in the market crr is used for nothing absolutely nothing no use of crr whereas slr is used for buying government securities so broadly there are three differences between crr and slr as can be seen from this table so all these are quantitative tools of monetary policy please learn these tools and this will immensely help you in the exam because the questions that are asked in pt are on the basis of these six rates if they come from monetary policy now let me know if you want to make more tutorials on economics we would be happy to make more tutorials please comment in the section below what you liked what you didn't like where can we improve on ourselves spread the word and be a part of this education revolution as you know the name that is an academy started by gorov and roman hit the thumbs up on facebook please promote us please motivate us to make more videos like us on facebook comment on an academy as well as roman's official channel twitter handle name is an academy as well as roman seni spread the word education for all revolution an academy this is our symbol and thank you for watching the tutorial so much